Welcome to our show of Alan Main Reviews, and tonight I'm here to review SmackDown Live. And this show will have the main event of Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton. I gotta be honest, I have just been dreading SmackDown the last couple months. I am bored to death. I do not care about anything on this show. And I think the main reason that's killed the show, the biggest reason is Jinder Mahal. He has just been a terrible champion. He has killed SmackDown. Jinder Mahal has single-handedly destroyed SmackDown, in my opinion. And I think it's had a trip, uh, like a trip triple down effect um he's been at the top and it's just destroyed everyone it's the fact that he, this guy is a bum he sucks his promos are fucking horrible he can't cut a decent promo he's a shitty wrestler he can't have a good match with nakamura he can't have a good match with anybody can you name one good Jinder Mahal match you've seen he's just terrible in the ring and he he has killed smackdown and it's been him it's he's just just put such a damper on the show that you can't even watch the show anymore and the show is just floundering i hate the show right now i mean nakamura they haven't allowed him to tear the host down they don't allow him to use a strong style he just isn't it's not working i'm afraid what's gonna happen i'm afraid vince might give up on him uh and just the woman has just been underutilized. Another thing worth noting, uh, big thing, the big story surrounding SmackDown. JBL is done. He's left SmackDown. He is still with WWE. Um, is he going to appear at Tribute to the Troops in WrestleMania? I mean, is he a big enough star to appear at WrestleMania? I don't know. Anyway, that's what he said. Uh, he's done. I don't know how... F- it supposedly has nothing to do with the more Ronaldo situation. He supposedly asked for... He gave a year's notice of leave. I mean, who? that's pretty damn impressive. Uh, but he was planning on leaving a whole year ago, and uh, he's not on SmackDown anymore. He's concentrating on charity work. Philanthropy is the future of marketing. Any single time I'm going to have to, everybody shows their charity work. I'm sorry, I have to do it. It's a good deal. It's just I will never forget that uh, tweet from Stephanie. Philanthropy is the future of marketing. Anyway, Corey Graves is replacing him. Commentary should be a bit better. I mean, Byron Sachs, I think he gets a lot of heat. I don't think he's that bad. Tom Phillips, okay, they're not terrible. The fact is, I just can't tell their voices apart. That's the problem I have with Phillips and Sachs, and they're not bad. Just I can't tell their voices apart. So, commentary should be less sufferable. Um, and uh, I'm actually uh, looking, you know, I think that might actually help the show a bit. So to open the show, they introduced Corey Graves, uh, basically said JBL you know, left to work with underprivileged kids and his charity foundations. Um, so they're, they're talking about Randy Orton. Um, he's So they did, Orton cut a promo, Nakamura cut a promo, it was just odd. Anyway, see Ellsworth in the ring with Carmella, and Carmella's not wearing that damn bathing suit ring attire, god damn it. The way the show opens is weird. Kevin Owens comes out. And he says he's going to be the referee in Carmella's match with Natalia. And then Shane comes out and they go on, they cut a promo and it's just, oh my God, this was embarrassing. This was so embarrassing for Shane McMahon. He completely forgot his lines and went on for about 20 seconds. He was just, he was, he was paused. He completely paused. He was completely stuck. He didn't remember any part of his lines. And the fans started chanting something at him. And it went on for 20 seconds. It was so... Oh, my God. It was so apparent. He just completely forgot his lines. It looked like he had... Maybe he had something written on his uh, arm. He looked at his arm. And then uh, Kevin you know, goes off when he starts talking and saying... They actually said... She, he says, Shane, your family would have been better off if you hadn't survived a helicopter crash. And Shane flips out. He beats the shit out of Kevin Owens. It goes on for a while. He just does the Shane McMahon punches on him. And they have Shane McMahon, an almost 50-year-old guy, beat the shit out of one of their top stars in Kevin Owens. Just beat Kevin Owens' ass. They haven't put him through a table or thing. Just start jumped him and just beat the shit out of him. So... That makes Kevin Owens look strong. I assume Hell in the Cell. So they show uh, show Kevin Owens backstage being insulted by Daniel Bryan, saying that was completely uncalled for. He said he, well, he was better off if he died, and his kids would be better off if Shane died. Just made Daniel Bryan look like an idiot. Um, and Kevin Owens saying he's going to sue them, so obviously what he wants is Hell in the Cell with Shane, and that's what will happen in Detroit. So Carmella and Natalia is finally going to happen. I wonder if Carmella was there the whole time. 
So next week in uh, Las Vegas, it's Sin City Smacked. They're already promoting that. I like how they uh, they had the graphic for that. It's going to be Natalia and Naomi. I think Carmella cashes in next week. I think Natalia wins, uh, beats her right now, and I think Carmella wins the title next week. And that's the same night as the finale of the Mae Young Classic. So Natalia won and Ellsworth fucked up. He tried to cash in Money in the Bank and Carmella dumps Ellsworth after it. She after they get in the ring and she starts, you know, running down Ellsworth. She calls him a charity case. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, a charity case after last week on Raw you played that video packed with all those kids. Remember, philanthropy is the future of marketing, Stephanie McMahon. There you go. That's all that's all, all your charities are all marketing, right? Philanthropy, the future of marketing. Fuck off. Uh, she just ran him down. I think this is it for Ellsworth. I don't know. I mean, we could hope. No offense to the guy. I know he's a big fan. But, I mean, come on. This guy has nothing. Uh, now, Dolph Ziggler re-debuts. Why? Why? Why can't this guy go away? So they replay uh, the you know the Connor's Cure video with the pediatric cancer to Pittsburgh Children's Hospital. We got a really nice video. Um, I saw a Make America Great Again or a Make America Great Again sign in the crowd. Um, a MAGA sign. Uh, again, I don't want to keep repeating it, but you know it's really heartwarming to see. It's just I just can't get over that tweet by Stephanie. Dolph Ziggler's out, unfortunately. To keep going back to it, I know it's. It seems it's just. It's such a great moment to see these kids happy. It's just I can't. When I see Stephanie introducing them, it's just something about it, man. I don't know. Anyway, let's let's get back to the show. Dolph Ziggler's out right now. Oh God! So Ziggler, it's just, it's just such a train wreck. He comes out and he's talking, and he leaves. He comes back as John Cena, and it's, it's terrible. I thought when they first had him play the John Cena music, I was kind of thinking, you know, it's supposed to be kind of cool. I I actually really enjoyed the Charlie Haas 2008 gimmick when he played everyone. You know, when he was JBL, when he was CHL, Charles Haas Layfield, that was hilarious. So I was thinking, all right, this is what Dolph's going to do. They did that with Damian Sandow, too, a couple years ago, before they fired him, before he settled with uh, Mizdow, or a few years ago. I was I'm thinking, we're going to see that, and this is what... They're gonna do it, Dolph. But no, and he comes up with as the Malto man with the smoking hot blonde. I don't know who she was, but oh my god, she was smoking hot. She was playing Miss Elizabeth, even though she looks nothing like Miss Elizabeth. Um, that's okay. Uh, it. I don't even think the crowd knew who Randy Savage was, and that made me sad. Then he comes out dressed as Naomi. I don't know why he's mocking Naomi. Are they gonna have him feud with Jimmy Uso? It was such a train wreck. It's unbearable. And when he's when you see him there. At, at the end when he was talking I'm winning I'm just winning from I'm done I quit I leave just leave man no one wants to see you anymore Sami Zayn and Aiden English is next Aiden English beat Sami Zayn pretty cleanly with the roll up I'm just oh man what a disaster Sami Zayn has been I mean, they've done such a bad job with him they had Sami chasing him to the back like an idiot Sami Zayn is such a geek on the show so Daniel Bryan's backstage. He's looking depressed after the KO and Shane stuff. New Day comes in and the Usos come and they announce a Sin City Street fight for the tag team titles uh, next week on uh, the SmackDown show. So they're really making the SmackDown Las Vegas show seem like a really big deal. I think it's also I think they're trying to you know get a sell out also for the May Young Classic. So I think they're trying to make this as special as possible. Also worth noting, I think Ronda Rousey and her four horsemen are going to be there, and I think. Uh, the WWE's four horsemen women are all going to be there. No, there's no Charlotte and Becky on the show. I think we're going to see that match at Survivor Series four and four, and that's why I think you don't see much of the four horsemen. Mega Sasha kind of is. I mean, they had to lose the title to Alexa on Raw last week, and she lost. I mean, she's in the fatal four, but she's not going to win. And I think the four horsemen are not being used too much because they're going to have a big feud with the UFC's four horsemen. Um. Anyway, I uh. Daniel Bryan after that, sorry for that tangent, he gets a phone call from uh, from someone who doesn't know, so he has to go to the ring, and he, it's going to be a segment. I don't know what's going to happen here. So when Daniel Bryan comes out, he uh, introduces Shane McMahon, and Shane, they did they sold it, but Shane didn't come out to his music. He just walked out, and uh, Daniel Bryan got on him. You know, He's mad at him, and uh, he talked about how he wanted to punch the Miz last year, and he never did, and Shane attacked Kevin Owens. And then uh, he reveals that Vince McMahon was the one who called him, which I thought I thought it was probably Vince. And he says Shane's definitely suspended. So 
Uh, indefinitely suspended. I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't know if it, they never really said he's done for sure. So I'm sure it's probably going to be hell in the cell. I really can't see. I can't see him dragging it out any longer. I think they've done so much. I think the they have to do hell in the cell. Hopefully, Shane doesn't actually do the jump back, and he doesn't need to do that for a hell in the cell show. But. Um, that's definitely the direction, and uh, you know they they sold it well. The fans said thank you, Shane. Even though I think they all know. I mean, this is if you think this is it, you're an idiot. You guys know I'm a huge Dan O'Brien fan, but I mean his acting it's never been a strong suit. He didn't really do that great of a job there. I see Mahal cutting a promo backstage. It's so fucking painful. I saw that SmackDown host show uh, picture. Oh my god, it, it's like dead. There's no one in the stands, and why? It's because Mahal. Mahal fucking sucks. He's terrible. He's the worst champ ever. He's not drawing shit. He can't draw flies to shit. It's him. He is so fucking bad. They show uh, AJ Styles on commentary now. Baron Corbin comes out. I'm just thinking to myself, his music, his Titan does not fit him. He comes out as this cocky heels talking shit to fans. I'm thinking to myself, why can't they just get rid of this guy and give his spot to Alistair Black? Alistair Black is what they want Baron Corbin so to be. Obviously, Corbin beat Dillinger. Match just nothing special. Um, then I don't want to get into a Corbin rant, so I'm just going to move on. After that, um, then they go to they show Ty Dillinger actually in the back and AJ Styles tells Ty it was a good match and he's going to give him a match next week um, they show Bobby Roode in the video package and he doesn't have a spot on the show unfortunately um, and then this, this weird segment James Ellsworth and Carmella um, Ellsworth is walking in the back and he wants to talk to her and you know she is just it's odd she looks at him and says we're going to do it my way and she kisses him so I guess they're a couple now. I'm sure that made Big Cass very happy. Um, and then she slaps him as hard as she... slaps him really hard. So I don't... I guess he's going to be her bitch. And uh, I don't even give a shit about this storyline at all. This is just terrible. Um, it's dreadful. So main event's next. Nakamura and Randy Orton. Nakamura came out. He didn't get a big pop at all. And I know it's not a big shit in Six Falls. But I'm a little concerned with Nakamura. I think he'll probably win for sure, but I, man. Kind of get the feeling the crowd's a little bit more into Orton than they are into Nakamura. So Nakamura got the uh, got the win. Match was really good. Um, similar match to, uh, you know, he, that Nakamura had a scene uh, um, like a month and month ago on SmackDown. That was really good. This match was kind of like that. Uh, it was a really good match. It was a big match to have on, uh, on the main event of just a regular, pay, a regular uh, SmackDown, but... Um, Nakamura won. Uh, crowd was a little bit more into Orton. This is a more of a casual uh, kind of fan base. So I mean, the crowd just not into Nakamura. It's probably the only time I think he's ever not had a, like a big ovation. Um, so after the match, they go backstage to Daniel Bryan and Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens is saying he's going to make SmackDown his show, but then Daniel Bryan informs Kevin Owens that next week, Vince McMahon will be on SmackDown. So, uh, Vince is on TV next week in Las Vegas. They're hyping the hell out of that show. They want to make this as big of a show as possible. And, uh, it's in Vegas, and it's the May Young Classic finale follows this, so they're really pushing next week's show, and next week's show is definitely going to be an eventful show, and I think SmackDown will be a lot happier, because uh, they don't have, they're, unlike Raw, they don't have to have to go up head-to-head against football, so um, this was uh, this was a good show, and I thought Raw was good, so I thought uh, like this was actually a good week for WWE.